So, it looks like Microsoft slipped a few new features for Windows 11 22H2 into a later update. Now that that update is here, we need to take a look at it. Stay tuned. A while back, I did a video on the new features in Windows 11 22H2. If you've seen that video, you would know that one of my disappointments was that during the research and writing for that video, I was able to use tabs in File Explorer. Then, right before I filmed the video, Microsoft took tabs away from me. So I wasn't able to show you guys what the tabs looked like or the, how they functioned. Then when Microsoft released 22H2, they said that tabs were coming, but they didn't come out with the release. They said that they would be released in a later feature update. Well, that update is finally here, and we have tabs in File Explorer, as well as quite a few other interesting things. Now, I'm not gonna cover everything that's new with the latest update, but I am gonna show you the stuff that stood out to me that I thought was pretty cool. So, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our install of Windows 11 22H2 with the latest updates, and I'm gonna show you some of the new features that came out in the latest update that I think stand out the most. Let's start with the fact that you can now pin stuff in the taskbar simply by dragging it. So if you click on the start menu and you go to all apps and then you find an app that you want to pin, like let's say we want to do the calculator. So we grab the calculator, we can drag it down and pin it in the taskbar. This is something we couldn't do before 22H2 and it's been something that people have complained about. The only downside that I've noticed is that from the start menu itself, you can't actually grab stuff and tag it like this. It won't let you do it. I'm not sure why it won't let you drag pinned icons to the taskbar, but who knows? It, maybe it's just a feature that's not implemented yet. And then while we're looking at the taskbar, let's go down to quick settings real quick. So if we click on our quick settings, you can see this is a similar quick settings as we've had before. However, what we can do now is we have an edit and a settings button within quick settings. So if we click on settings, obviously it gives us all settings. But if we click on the edit, we can actually move these around or get rid of the ones that we don't want. So you can take these things, move them around, change their order in any way you want, or hit this little button right here to completely eliminate something if you want to. And then once you're done, you can click done, and the quick settings will look the way that you want them to look. So another really neat one that I found, we're gonna have to actually get a program open to use this one. So I'm gonna open up Notepad real quick. And from Notepad, let's just type a phone number. So I'm gonna put 408-555-1234. So now we have a phone number here. If we highlight this number and then copy it, what it'll do is it'll automatically give you suggestions on what you can use that number copied to the clipboard for. So I believe the way this works is it works with phone numbers, email addresses, and maybe even street addresses, but I'm not sure on that one right there. I think it depends on if you have an app installed on your computer that can actually use that data in some way. So play around with it and see what you can come up with and let me know in the description below. Okay, so the next one is really neat, and this one right here is something I've been looking forward to for a really long time. So if we come down here, we don't want to save this, and we right-click on the taskbar, you can see we have taskbar settings. This is the way it's been for a long time. However, in the new update, Microsoft enabled the ability to have access to the task manager from the right-click menu on the taskbar finally. Unfortunately, it's not enabled on everyone's computer, so if it's not enabled on yours, like it's not on mine, then we have to make a registry change in order to get this to work. So let me show you how to do it. So we click on the start button, we open up our registry editor, and then from there, we wanna go into local machine, system, current control set, and then go into control, and then feature management. And for that, we're gonna have to scroll down a little bit to feature management here. And then we wanna click on overrides. And then from overrides, we wanna click on number four. And then from here, you'll notice that we have a bunch of different keys right here. And we're gonna add another one real quick. So to do that, just right click on the number four, select new and select key from the list. And then I'm just gonna paste this from my clipboard right here. But as you can see, this is gonna be 18878 six nine five eight zero and then hit enter and then after we do that we want to create some d word values right over here so the first d word value that we want to enter is going to be enable state and for this one we want to change this to two and then once we change it to two we want to create one more d word value and that d word value is going to be enable state options and for that one we can leave that one at zero 
So, unfortunately, with this setting right here, you can't just restart Explorer to get it to take effect. You actually have to restart the system completely. So go ahead and restart your system, and I'll meet you back in Windows. Okay, now that the system's restarted, if we go down to the taskbar and we hit the right-click menu, there we go. There's Task Manager, just like it is in Windows 10. I have to say, this right here is probably one of my favorite features in the newest update. Actually being able to open Task Manager from the right-click menu on the taskbar, I didn't think I would miss it so much, but I really did. Let's get back to it. Okay, so the next thing that we have to look at is I'm gonna go ahead and close this right here. And for this one, we're gonna go to Start, we're gonna type in Control Panel, and then from Control Panel, we're gonna go to Uninstall a Program, and then we wanna go to Turn Windows Features On or Off. And then once this loads right here, I'm gonna scroll down until we find right here, SMB 1.0. Okay, so here's the thing. This is a change that hasn't been fully implemented yet, but it's going to drastically affect a small minority of users. So we're gonna have to talk about this for a minute. In the latest update, Microsoft says that they have disabled SMB 1 from Windows 11 Home. You know, for the vast majority of users, you're gonna have no idea what I'm even talking about. So let me explain to you what SMB is. SMB simply stands for Service Message Block. Most people know it as simply Samba. Samba is the file sharing protocol that's used today almost exclusively in Windows. It was created originally in 1984 by IBM in order to use file sharing in DOS. So it's definitely been around for a while. And you know, I completely agree with Microsoft's decision to disable SMB1 from the latest versions of Windows. It's an outdated and insecure protocol that isn't even used by the vast majority of users. It doesn't need to be turned on unless you need it. However, that's not the issue. The issue is that Microsoft has announced that it's currently simply disabled, but they're gonna be taking it away completely soon. So you won't even be able to enable it at all. Now the reason this is a problem is because a small minority of users are still using technology that requires SMB1. I help a lot of small businesses, and amongst those small businesses are real estate agents and brokers that need to print an amazing amount of things. If you've ever purchased a house or taken out a loan, you understand the amount of paper that's involved. And because of this, a lot of these businesses use professional laser printers. These printers are not cheap, and I have several customers that are using printers that are pretty old. People don't want to simply drop thousands of dollars to replace something that works perfectly fine. But you know, this is where the issue arises, because most of these printers also have scanners. The most common way to configure these scanners is through Windows file sharing. So when someone goes to scan a document, they choose their name from the control panel of the printer and then push the scan button. The scanner will scan the page and then save it to a network drive that is typically configured for each individual user system. These printers are old, and up until just a few years ago, many of these printer manufacturers were still using SMB1 in order to connect these network drives. There is no chance that these printers are going to be updated to support a more modern protocol. And Microsoft claims that they disabled SMB1 in the latest update to Windows 11. However, that isn't true. SMB1 has been disabled by default since the early days of Windows 10. But if Microsoft takes away the ability to turn on SMB1 support, it's going to create major problems with people that still use hardware that requires it. Now, I totally understand that this is the printer manufacturer's fault for using SMB1 in the first place. However, that doesn't change the fact that removing support for this from Windows is going to create a lot of unnecessary e-waste and cost for small businesses. Thousands of dollars. Anyway, that's my rant. Let's get back to the list. Okay, so now we've talked about that, let's go and look at the feature that everyone's probably watching this video because of, and that's tabs in File Explorer. So we're gonna open File Explorer up here, and there we go. We now have tab support in File Explorer. This is actually really cool to be able to use File Explorer with tabs. To open a new one, you just click this plus sign, and you can open as many tabs as you want across the top. Now, there are some limitations to this. For one, you can't drag a tab out or drag a tab into another running version of File Explorer, but you can open them in the instance that you currently have running. So we're gonna look at a few ways that we can use tabs in File Explorer. For one, let's open up my pictures folder here, and then I'm gonna open up my 
desktop folder here. So now that I have both of these open, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a picture. I'm gonna drag it over into my desktop tab and drop it here. And as you can see right there, it copied over. And do the reverse, I can copy it here. I can go back over here and drop it into my pictures folder. And it makes it really easy to be able to manipulate files with tabs. I've been looking forward to having this for quite a while. So while we're here, let's look at a couple other changes that they made within File Explorer. For instance, we no longer have quick access. Now we have simply home. So if you click on home, it gives you where your quick access is at, as well as your favorites and your recent documents. And as well as that, they've also changed the navigation menu quite a bit. The navigation menu now has your quick access shortcuts right here. And then right below that, it gives you more of a tree setup so you can go to different folders from within your file structure itself. I actually kind of like the change that they made right here to the navigation bar. I think it works really good. So Windows 11 keeps getting better as it ages. When I first installed Windows 11, I thought it was a joke. The original leaked beta was literally Windows 10 with a modified skin. However, Windows 11 today is quickly becoming its own operating system. I'm not in any way saying that it's perfect, and there are many people that are going to hate it no matter what Microsoft does. But I think it's coming around, and with just the few tweaks that we've gotten recently, it's really making a big difference. Personally, my two favorite features covered in this video have to be tabs in File Explorer and the ability to open Task Manager from the right-click menu on the taskbar. Finally! I have no idea why they took away that in the first place. If you'd like to see what else is new in 22H2, then check out this video here that I did prior to 22H2's release. It goes through the bigger features of 22H2 in more detail. You guys have a great day.